My friends, hello and welcome back. I'm so glad you're here, ready to work on some science. So we're gonna be covering life science here. And life science represents about maybe 40% of the GED or high set test. So make sure you have a solid understanding of these science questions. Now, with science, you're really looking at a couple of things. First, how good is your reading comprehension and being able to analyze and infer what the reading is. And second, you really want to make sure that you're able to read and comprehend graphs and charts. So huge thanks to HiSet for letting me use their free practice test. But if you're taking the GED, this is really going to prepare you just as much. Okay, my friends, if you are new here, click subscribe because I would love to have you. I have so many videos, hundreds of videos that help you on your GED high set journey. And if you've been with me for a while or if you're brand new, I would love to invite you to my Purely Persistent Academy membership that will really help prepare you in so much more depth than you'll find here on, on YouTube affordable and effective, and it pairs perfectly with your local adult education program. Okay, friends, let's jump right in and get started. So the first thing I like to do is just sort of take a look at the picture. What is going on? So here we have a graph and you can see it is linear, so it's a straight line. And we have the ambient temperature on the bottom. That's going to be the temperature of the surroundings with on the y-axis, we have the body temperature. And you can see here as the ambient temperature goes up, the body temperature goes up and it's actually the same. <laughs> In this picture here, we have a map sort of. <laughs> so it says image one shows the different habitats occupied by leopard frogs during different seasons. Okay, so B up here we have B, that's the breeding habitat. S, so it looks like S is the land, and the land is the summering habitat. And then O down here, bottom of the pond is the overwintering habitat. And then here we have another chart. So we have the inspired oxygen and the heart rate. And so you can see that it remains about the same based on the temperature. Okay, let's dive in and actually read, okay? Frogs are cold-blooded animals that cannot generate their own body heat. Graph one shows the temperature of frogs in relation to the ambient temperature. Frogs like the northern leopard frog and the bullfrog can survive in freezing winters. However, reproduction and other life processes depend on changing seasons. The northern leopard frog lays eggs in shallow ponds, also called breeding ponds, just like we saw right here. These ponds usually have a depth of 1.5 to 2 meters, allowing water to be heated by the sun. This makes the temperature of the pond suitable for the rapid development of eggs into tadpoles and then adult frogs. These ponds lack fish and are not connected to other bodies of water. Frogs also use different modes of breathing in different seasons. The northern leopard frogs hibernate in the bottom of ponds during winters, typically covering themselves in mud and sitting very still. They choose ponds that have enough dissolved oxygen and will not freeze all the way to the bottom. Graph two shows the heart rate and the amount of oxygen utilized by the northern leopard frog at different temperatures. Okay, so now let's take a look at the questions. So we're starting here with number six. So based on graph one, what can likely be interpreted about the change in the body temperature of the frog in relation to the ambient temperature? Okay, let's go back and take a look at that chart. So here we discussed that this is a linear chart, right? As the body temperature goes up or as the ambient temperature around the frog goes up, then they, they both just go up together, right? Because it's a linear line. So let's take a look at those questions together. The body temperature decreases as the ambient temperature increases. Did that happen? No, because they were both increasing together at the same rate. So A is not the answer. The body temperature increases as the ambient temperature increases. Yes, that is it. They both go up at the same time, same rate together. C, the body temperature remains constant. No, it was going up. D, the body temperature increases even if the ambient temperature increases or decreases. No, it goes up together. Question number seven. Based on graph two, what can be predicted about the heart rate of 30 degrees Celsius for a 10% inspired oxygen level? So let's take a look. We're looking at 30 degrees Celsius and 10% inspired oxygen. Okay, so here we have 
the 10 inspired oxygen, right? So this kind of goes up just like this. And then we have 30 degrees. So here we have 25 degrees and here we have 35. So we can just estimate that right about here in the middle would be that 30 degrees. So then we just kind of go over and looks like we're right around 60. So let's see if that's one of our options. Yes, it is. So C here is 60. And so really it's important to be able to take a look at a graph and line things up, interpret them as best as you can. In fact, my friends, this question type was actually considered a hard question, okay? But really, looking at the graph, it wasn't so bad, right? If I can do this, you can do this as well. Question eight. The table below lists the characteristics of the breeding pond in which the northern leopard frogs lay eggs. So these ponds lack fish and other predators. Which of the listed characteristics is likely the reason for this? So why are they lacking those fish? Remember, as we read, the pond is just a pond right there by itself, right? It doesn't have other water coming in and there are no predators, right? Okay, so number one here, ponds are shallow with a depth of 1.5 to two meters. Is that going to make it so that there are no other fish and predators? Not really, right? They can be small or they can be shallow, they can be deep, uh, it really doesn't matter. I mean, think about a stream that's really shallow or really deep, are there still predators? Yes. Number two, ponds are not interconnected with other bodies of water. That's true, right? There are no streams going through. And is that going to make it so that they lack fish? Yes right? Because sometimes fish move from pond to pond through, through streams, rivers, etc. But let's look at the other option. Three, ponds have enough dissolved oxygen for other organisms to survive. Does that have anything to do with predators and other fish? No. Ponds get heated quickly by the sun, making the water unsuitable for life. Is it unsuitable? No, right? It, in fact, it said that the other, as the fish are going from egg to tadpole to not fish, frog, goes from egg to tadpole to frog, it needs that warmer temperature where the water's warm by the sun, right? So friends, number two is our answer. Question nine, the breeding ponds in which northern leopard frogs lay eggs usually have a depth of 1.5 to two meters. However, these ponds should not be too shallow. What could be the likely reason for this? Okay, I want you to think about how sometimes in a pond, what happens in the summer? How does the pond look at the beginning of the summer versus the end of the summer? So use your own life to think about this before we go in and answer the questions. When I go to ponds, I notice that that in the beginning of the summer or even even a lake that has that water coming in and out it tends to be a lot higher at the beginning of the summer and at the end of the summer it becomes a lot lower and the same with an isolated pond higher in the winter lower in the summer even if you have a like a little yard with a pond or something or even if you just put a bucket of water outside or a cup of water what happens to it even by the end of the day it evaporates right so the the sun heats up the water and it evaporates that's what happens to ponds so our answer here, without even looking at the rest of them, because I kind of gave you the answer, is A, right? The pond will dry up before the tadpoles grow, tadpoles grow into adults. So that's why they want to make sure it's a deeper pond so that the tadpoles can actually grow before the water dries out. Question 10. What is the likely reason that northern leopard frogs hibernate at the bottom of the pond during the winter? Okay, so we read about this, but let's look at it just a little bit more. If you remember, the frogs go to the bottom of the pond right here where it's probably going to be a little bit deeper and they cover themselves in mud right and that part of the water because of the oxygen level doesn't actually freeze and so they just hibernate they're the same temperature as the ambient temperature the water the mud around them and then they'll be ready to go when springtime comes so let's dive in and look at those actual answers okay so are they hibernating at the bottom of the pond oh, to avoid being noticed by any predator uh, yeah right? Are you going to notice a frog buried in a pile of mud at the end of a pond that is probably frozen over on the top and not frozen at the bottom? Probably not. But let's look at the other options. To expend less oxygen from their body, would that have anything to do with the bottom of the pond? No. To prevent the loss of heat from their body. Think about this. Frogs are amphibians, right? They're cold-blooded, so their body temperature is the same as that ambient or surrounding body temperature, so they're not going to lose heat like we would. To avoid being swept away by the flow of water. Is there any flow of water? No, right? This is a solitary pond with no water coming in and out. It's kind of like the Dead Sea or something. So our answer then 
is A, to avoid being noticed by any predator. We made it to the end. Now you know so much more about the northern leopard frog, right? So do I. <laughs> Who knew? But thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments that you are here. You stay to the end because you are purely persistent. So great job, my friend. Pat on the back goes to you. Now make sure you believe in yourself just like I believe in you. And I will see you in our next video. Peace, my friends, and God bless.